Hi, I'm Neil. Welcome to my project, the $10 Robot. I run a school robotics club. One of the things we do is enter a robotics competition called Pi Wars, held at Cambridge University here in the UK. After winning the competition, the students were asking if they could build more robots, which they could then keep for themselves, so they could carry on tinkering at home. Unfortunately, I had to say no. They're just too expensive to give to each student. Looking at a robot from the last competition, it's got a Raj Pi as its brain. This costs about £30. There's an amazing robotics control board called Red Bull Plus, which costs about £36. Then you've got the cost of the chassis, motors, batteries and controller. So it tells you a little bit about £100 to get a very basic robot running. Did I mention that you won a competition? So I then started thinking, what can I do to make a basic working robot for as little money as possible? I'm lucky that I have access to lots of laser cutters, 3D printers, general workshop machinery. I had a look at my box of bits. I already had loads of ESP32 microcontrollers, DC-DC converters, HP modules and motors. All of them were from previous projects, so I thought I'd see what I could do with them. The ESP32 is a great choice for the brain of a robot as it has built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You can program them in Python or Arduino. There's loads of examples and of course they are very cheap. At this point I thought it might be possible to make a basic robot for $10. When I first started thinking about the design of a board, I thought I'd keep it as small as possible, ideally the same size as a Raja Pi Zero. So I first chose to use an M5 stamp Pico, a tiny ESP32 based microcontroller with just enough inputs and outputs to drive a couple of motors, control a few servos and read a few sensors. I started designing a board using KiCad and here's the result. It's got everything I wanted. A DC DC converter so you can use a range of batteries, a dual H bridge for controlling two motors, reverse clarity protection and four spare GPO pins to connect to additional devices. I was pretty happy with this. I put it inside the chassis, had a quick test and it worked. The first board was made using components I already had. So I then started looking for cheaper alternatives. Here's the next board with a cheaper H bridge and DC DC converter from AliExpress. It still uses the M5 stamp Pico, but I realised this is too expensive as about $6 for a robot that's supposed to come in at $10 in total. So I designed another board. It's got the same H bridge and DC DC converter, but instead of the M5 stamp Pico, it's got an ESP32S module like this. Size wise, it's similar to the M5 stamp, but it's a lot cheaper. You can get them for $1.60 if you buy them in bulk. One other issue with these is that you need an additional programmer to load your code into the device, which of course adds to the cost. So I decided looking at ESP32 dev kits. These are development boards with an ESP32 device and a built in USB programmer. These come in at under $3, so they would work well with my $10 budget. So of course these boards are a fair bit bigger and so they want to fit inside the footprint of a Pi Zero. So I decided to up the size of that of a Pi 3A Plus, which is still a good choice as it means they can be used with our original robot chassis. I had a 38 pin ESP32 dev kit in my parts box, so I designed the board around that. The bonus feature of this board is it's got space to break out all the GPO pins of the ESP32 module. So on the side, it's got another 14 IO pins, so it's dedicated pins for serial and I2C communication. There are a lot of different sized ESP32 development boards out there with a confusing number of different sizes and pinouts. In the end, I decided the 30 pin dev kit is you can buy them in bulk packs on that express so they work out pretty cheap. So here's my final design with the 30 pin ESP32 dev kit. As for the chassis, I wanted to keep it as small as possible to keep the cost down. I'd be able to fit a Pi 3A plus size board and a 6 AA battery pack. I wanted the robot to be tracked and I found some cheap leather tracks on AliExpress. These factors decided the overall size of the robot chassis. I wanted the chassis to mainly be laser cut and it's quick and cheap but there's no reason that the parts can't all be 3D printed. Obviously the wheels are 3D printed and in the end I printed the tank tracks in flexible TPE filament to get the overall cost down. I wanted the robot to be able to be controlled by a phone or website so there's no additional cost for a controller. But I also wanted to be able to use PlayStation controllers as already use these in the robotics club. And just for a bit of fun, I designed my own ESP32 based gamepad to control the robot as well. All the code is of course available on GitHub. And this makes a very basic robot, which is really more of a DIY remote control car. But now I want to make various add-ons starting with sensors for line following and maze solving, a robot arm to pick up and move objects and I've seen it from user vision, with open CV, and an ESP32 for object tracking and colour recognition, adding more advanced robot features. Thank you.